Hello and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. We are streaming live right here on YouTube and today is Monday, September 26th. The year is 2022. If this is your first time with me, I am thrilled that you are here. If you are returning, yay, I'm so glad you've come back. I have an amazing slit Z fold card for you tonight. I've got some beautiful Christmas cards to share with you and some fun ones too, but a lot of samples tonight. I actually have six plus a bonus for tonight's live stream. All those are gonna be provided in the free project sheet that you're gonna be able to find down in the video description below when tonight's live stream is over. Now, if you're new here, this is not gonna make any sense to you, but for those of you that are returning, you might be thinking, mm, where's Gina tonight? My daughter, Gina Hawley, is always live with me on the last Monday of the month. But here in West Central Florida, we are preparing for Hurricane Ian. And I pulled my mom card today and I sent her home because she lives further north from me and she's going to be safer there. And she also needed to prepare herself because they recently moved and they didn't have all the things that they needed. So I know that you respect my decision and she is super bummed that she's not here tonight, but thank you for understanding. She will be back with me next month for sure. Now, if you are here for the live chat, good news is Gina is here with you in the live chat. You'll see her name in blue off to the side. She's going to help moderate tonight's live stream. She's here to interact with you as well as provide you with links. But if you're not watching live, we would love to be able to hear from you as well. So you're all going to need to log into your YouTube account, which requires a Gmail address in order to chat. I come back and I read every single comment. So I would absolutely love to hear from you. All right, I think that's it for the intro tonight. I'm gonna to go ahead and turn that camera down and we're gonna get started. I also wanna remind you as I'm moving those buttons out of the way that I do a live five question Q&A when tonight's live stream is over. So do me a favor and stick around with me. I would love to be able to answer your questions live. All right, I am gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna do this on white paper because the base of my actual card is black and I'll just switch these out. I knew you would not be able to see very well. So I'm going with white paper so we can mark it up and talk it over a little bit more so it's easier for you to see. All right, so the very first piece, this is really the primary base of the card, is actually an odd size. This is measuring four by nine and three quarters. Please remember that all the cutting and scoring dimensions and a template for you along with cutting dimensions and supplies are all inside that project sheet. All right, we're gonna do the first score line at five and one quarters of an inch. Now, I absolutely love my Stampin' Up! paper trimmer. There is a ledge here at the top. There's another one at the bottom. It includes both the scoring and the cutting blade so they can stay on that clear track at the exact same time. That clear track, oh my gosh, it is a game changer. Love this trimmer and I've used many, many, many over the years. So the score line is going to be at five and a quarter. That's the very first one. And we're just going to score down. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we are actually going to turn this. So I'm rotating it now. So this is the short end at the top. And here on the right hand side, I've got a one inch mark, obviously in both places, but I like it here because I have more to hold. So I'm going to take this upper corner and I'm going to line this up at the one inch mark using that ledge to my advantage. So it's nice and straight. I am gonna bring up my blade and I'm keeping my finger there so it doesn't fall on my paper before I want it to make my slit. There's only two dimensions you're gonna to need to remember from here on out. The first one is three, the second one is seven and a half. So what I'm doing is making sure I haven't moved my paper, I'm at one inch. I'm bringing my, gla my blade here to the three inch mark. Now I know that's gonna to be tough for you to see which is why I used white paper versus black. But I, there's a little identifier here on my trimmer blade and I can see it's lined up right here at three inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drop that. And like I said, we're going to seven and a half. So I'm just gonna slide the blade straight down. This is gonna give us that slit. All right, now what we're gonna do is move that blade all the way out of the way, we're done with that. We're gonna do some scoring, which is why I love this trimmer because you can keep both of them on here. We are going to turn this and I wanna make sure that you are aware that this is the wider side or the biggest section of this card. So this is a little bit smaller than this side. So I'm turning it now. The slit is here at the top. Remember I told you to remember three and seven and a half. 
So the very first time we're going to line up at three inches on the paper trimmer. And in essence, what that does is it provides you the alignment to the end of the slit. And all we're going to do is we are going to bring this here to the one inch mark. Remember we did that a one inch, one inch slit right here. And I'm lining that up right to that slit and I am going to score down. Okay. So the scoring line is only from the slit to the bottom. Now that second measurement was seven and a half. So I'm gonna open up the arm to that trimmer. Don't you love that? And I am going to come over here to seven and a half inches. And now you're gonna see the end of the slit here. So that just positions it in the track. And this time what we're going to do is we are going to score from the slit up. So in essence, these are gonna be opposite each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it there and then I'm going to score. So we have score down, score in the middle, score at the top. Remember, there is a template for you inside your project sheet. Now you get to see my crude little handwriting there, but that'll give you an idea of what we're looking at, okay? Now, the next thing we're going to do is you are literally going to flip this over like so, all right? And let me bring in the black one. This is identical to what we just did. It's just in black. I like to score on the white when I'm using black cardstock because I know it's really, really hard to see. All right, so do you see the score lines here? So there's one, two, and then three. What I want you to do is I want this one to go to the inside. That's what we call a valley fold, okay? This one is going to come out, which is what we call a mountain fold. This one down in the center, another mountain fold. And all you have to do is start to just create that Z. Do you see the Z in the paper? And just start to collapse it. And then naturally, this piece is going to come all the way over to here. Look at me, I scored it wrong. How could I have done that? Oh my goodness gracious. Should I show you how many I made? And aren't you glad I made a backup? Oh heavens. You know what? I didn't score this at five and a quarter. I did five and a half. Good thing I got another one. I just redeemed myself. Okay, one more time. So this is the five and a quarter, wider side. There we go, we've got valley fold, mountain fold, and then when you crease it, you're gonna get your ends to meet up. Really important, five and a quarter. I've made that mistake before. I'm gonna use that bone folder. We're gonna go over those creases with it. And I'm also gonna open this up and I'm gonna come from the back side as well. And I'm gonna crease here. Whenever you are doing a fun fold, you wanna make sure that you're reinforcing those score lines. That score line does not come down here. There's no score line here because then we're going to add some panels. All right, let me move some of these papers out of the way because I have some new ones to bring in. This actually is not quite finished yet. Obviously, we're going to decorate it, but I have another piece I'm going to add. So I'm going to put this off to the side and let's do a little bit of stamping. I've got a piece of basic white scrap cardstock here. I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer with my camera. And I am actually going to stamp an image that I have fallen in love with. Now, those of you that are with me uh, over this last Saturday at the online stamping retreat for fall got to see me use this adorable Christmas Scotty stamp set. And I'm going to do something kind of similar, but so many people got left out of this tip. I wanted to make sure I shared it on this card. And like I said, Got six more samples for you, so stick around. The great thing about the stamp set, are you ready? It has a coordinating punch, look at that. It's gonna punch out the bow and it's gonna punch out the dog. And I don't care whether you like the Christmas set or not, you could use these little images all year round. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. I'm gonna stamp my dog in black, which is the Memento Black ink pad. Now, because this is a solid photopolymer stamp and I have very arthritic hands, I find it difficult sometimes to get a really good solid impression. And I have two tips for you. The first is this. You're gonna to wanna to use your pierce mat. Now, this is all sold in my online store, everything you see here. And that provides me with a little bit of oomph from the bottom up. So that density gives me a little cushion. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my little dog. I'm gonna give it a little twist on my ink pad and then I'm gonna follow up with lots of taps to cover it up. Now this is a photopolymer stamp, which means that it's clear. So if you look at it, you can see that it's turned the color that you need, which is fabulous. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to stamp that here. Lots of firm, even pressure. Remember that's helping me push from the bottom and then we're going to lift. Do you see that right there? It was not intentional, trust me. 
But if you're like me and that often happens, you may think that you have to constantly redo the image in order to fix it. But I want to teach you a little trick. This is the Light Basic Black Stampin' Blends markers, and you'll experiment depending on how juicy your ink pad is, okay? If yours is brand new and it's pretty juicy, you'll probably use the darker one. For me, I use that pad like every day. I am gonna use the chiseled tip of that marker, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add small little dots right over that area, and as that alcohol base dries to this marker, that's gonna become virtually invisible. You're not even going to see it and any little flaw is automatically fixed. I know you're welcome. Isn't that just amazing? Love it. Like I said, there's a punch. So I'm going to come in with that Scotty Dog punch and I'm just going to line this up. I'm going to give you a great punch tip. The Stampin' Up! punches are fantastic, not because I sell them, but because first of all, I love that you can lock them and they can store flat. But secondly, did you know that if you lightly squeeze the punch, it, look, it locks the cardstock in place, which means you're going to keep your positioning when you punch it out. Love that. Now, I am going to make a bow for this. So let's talk a little bit about that. I'm going to push my little dog off to the side. This stamp set has a really unique feature, and I'm going to do that in the real red. There's actually two images here for the bow. And it's intended to be stamped together so that you get the 3D look. I'm going to bring in a little bit of scratch paper here. This is my mini grid sheets. I'm going to move that um, pad out of the way. I'm going to use here up at the top and I'm going to stamp the bow. So I've got my two images already mounted. I'm going to use real red. So I'm going to ink up the solid larger bow and I'm going to stamp off. Something you need to know too, one ink pad will typically produce at least three or four more shades of color. Fantastic tip if you're looking to save a few dollars and not buy two ink pads closely related. Love that. So I'm gonna ink up, stamp off again because I want this to be lighter, okay? Oh, look at that. I'm having an off night. Can you tell I've been doing hurricane stuff all day? All right, let's do that again. I'm gonna ink, stamp off, here we go. All right, that's much better. And then I'm gonna take the smaller one, which is intended to be the outline. Now, one of the things I wanna tell you about is that sometimes you might find when it's inked, like me, you have to get your head super duper close in order to line up this edge of the bow to this one. So let's go ahead and let's do it this way and let's see how it comes up. Not bad, but I wanna give you idea number two. Let's do the bottom of the bow first. Now let's switch over and stamp off with the bigger solid one. And now guess what? Because we've reduced the ink tone, you can actually tend to see it easier or better. I want you to experiment both ways on which is easier for you. This one worked out really well for me today because my head was further away. All right, so I'm just stamping off all my excess ink. Love to do that because that saves me trips to have to rinse out my stamp and scrub or perhaps you're using the chamois. And then I'm gonna come back with that punch this time, but I'm gonna cut away some of that paper because do you see how the bow is actually at the top of the punch? So I know this won't reach. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut away that excess. And I'm gonna slide this right down inside. And I'm looking, looking to try to get that border all the way around. And then we're gonna punch. All right, so now I've got my pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll set that right off to the side. And now what I'm going to do is I want to do one more thing. So I'm going to bring back that piece of foam. And this time I am going to stamp the very large plaid image that is inside that stamp set. Because isn't that like really reminiscent of the Scotty dogs? Love it. So I'm going to lay that here and I'm going to ink that up in the real red as well. Now this is a larger stamp. So you're just going to want to take your time and do a little traveling for coverage. Again, using that foam mat to my advantage lots and lots and lots of pressure okay because i want to make sure i get a really good image which is what i have here again like you've watched me do i like to get all that excess ink off that reduces those trips to the sink for sure and then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to close this up for right now we'll revisit this ink pad for another tip in a few minutes i'm going to come back to the punch because what i want to do now is i'm going to punch out the dog using that plaid background all right I'm going to go ahead and discard what I don't need, but I am actually going to do one more thing. I am going to use the double oval punch. Now, I have loved this because obviously greetings will fit in here, and then, of course, you can double layer them. 
But in this case, I decided that my dog needed a little bit of a coat. So I'm gonna slide this into my punch and you're gonna see that you're gonna work kind of between the legs right here. Do you see them? And you're looking to kind of mirror it. Now you're gonna probably look and think, oh, that's gonna to be too big, but I'm gonna give you a tip and we're gonna punch that out, all right? So now we have a portion of an oval that we're gonna use for the coat. I'm gonna come in with my paper snips and I'm gonna use that dog as an example so I kind of know what I need to snip away just to make it easy. So I'm gonna snip away a little bit here near the end. I'm just gonna kind of curve this and I can kind of hold it and see if it's gonna fit. It looks good. And then I'm gonna snip a little bit here away from the top. And I'm not too overly worried about this because remember we've got a bow we're gonna work with as well. All right, so that works for me. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet and I'm gonna flip this little piece over. Now I know you probably love liquid glue. I'm not a glue girl, okay? So I'm gonna use my Stampin' Seal Plus. It comes out in small tabs and that's gonna allow me, you know what, I wanna put a little bit more on here. It's gonna allow me to put just a little bit of adhesive on the back. I love adhesive, I'm an adhesive girl. And there we go, we got a little jacket for our dog. Really cute, huh? All right, do you remember the bow? Okay, so I have my bow here and I'm gonna flip that over. And this time I'm going to use a mini dimensional and I'm gonna use my take your pick tool with that paper piercing tool attachment. Love that because it's kind of like my third hand and I'm gonna remove that paper backing. That's really tough for me to do with my arthritic fingers. So that tool is wonderful. And then I'm just gonna put that bow right here. Cute, huh? Okay, but let's work on the rest of this card because I wanna show you where the pieces go on this panel. I've got a piece of designer series paper here. This is from the Gingham uh, Cottage. A cut, yeah, Gingham Cottage. I always like lose the name of this. Yes, Gingham Cottage designer series paper. It is double-sided like Stampin' Up's designer papers. So fun because you can use it all year round. It's got great colors in the package and the package is very abundant. So what I'm gonna do is flip that over. I'm gonna add a little adhesive here to the back side. I've got a layer of white cardstock. This is going to go here. I am gonna take that dog and I'm gonna flip that upside down and I'm switching over to the full size dimensionals now. And I'm really big on balancing these because I know I'm going to mail this card and I wanna make sure that it holds up to the rollers inside the mail meter at the post office. Now this little spice right there, I might be a little concerned that it's gonna get snagged coming in and outside of the envelope. So I wanna show you what I did. Here are the mini dimensionals. Now here in the studio, I keep a pair of scissors with ribbon on them and we designate them the sticky scissors. While the dimensionals are right here on that paper backing, you can cut them in half so they're even smaller yet. And you can see I've got a couple strays there because I love to use these. I use that tool to help me lift them. And now I know this is gonna be well balanced and that tail is not gonna get caught coming in and out of the envelope. And then we'll go ahead and remove those backings. All right, nice and sticky for sure. And then this is going to go here. I'm gonna do lower center for my dog. Now we have some other areas on here that are going to need some decoration. I wanna talk about some great tips for you when you put your card together. Let's go ahead and let's add this first panel. I'm gonna add some adhesive to the back side. Wait till you see these other six cards. I think you're really gonna be wowed at the possibilities of this fun fold. This is going to go up here. Now there's only a small margin of cardstock because I added that white layer. Please keep in mind in the cutting dimensions I provide you in that project sheet, you can tweak all of that. I decided I wanted this to be one strip because remember there's no score line here. So I've got a same piece of designer series paper, same package, different color, different pattern. Isn't that fun? And this time I interchanged to the red just to bring some pop. Wait till you see how this comes together. And I'm gonna add some adhesive now to the back side of the strip. And that now is going to get layered. Boy, I'm all thumbs tonight for crying out loud. <laughs> Gosh, you know, hurricanes will do that to you. They really will. And I'm looking to align both sides, looking to see if it's even the best I can. And that's gonna go here. Now, you're gonna notice when I open this up that there's two other sections here. Do you see them? Well, I did that ahead of time, but I cut two smaller pieces. This is also in your project sheet. I don't like to have to bend pieces and make them fold, so I kind of did this way. Let's start with the larger one first. We're gonna add a little adhesive to the back side here, okay? 
and then this is going to go down here at the bottom. So I'm working within this score line peak here and the end of the cardstock. Again, I'm hovering over the top because I want to make sure that I have it as even and equal as I can. Just do the best you can. And we're gonna put that here. These are the exact same size as you can see. One thing I wanna tell you, and when you see the other samples, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you have a continuous pattern, be very cognizant of that because one of the cards I'm gonna share with you tonight, you'll see what I mean. So that one's gonna go here. And then this one is going to go here. Now you might think this card's almost done, but it's not because we've got another piece. This time I'm looking to align the top edge visually the best I can with the one next to it. And let's face it, none of us cuts perfectly straight. So we're just gonna give ourselves a little forgiveness if it's not perfect. Here and here, you're gonna see different variations. I'm leaving this one black for this specific card, but my other samples will give you some other ideas. For here, I have a piece of basic white cardstock. Now I'm gonna layer this as well, but let's go ahead and do a little bit more stamping because I wanna show you a couple other things. Back to my black ink pad, and I've pulled out the words from that stamp set that say, may your days be furry and bright. I am gravitating this all the way over to the right side because remember, this is a Z fold. So you're gonna to want to make sure that this is going to be visible. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that here. Nice and crooked. Guess what, mom, you're getting another card. That's what I always say. Let's get myself another shot at it, okay? Two sides to every piece of paper, right? You know what this means. It means my head has to come into your event camera view in order to see it. I'm so sorry. That just means you get to look at all my gray roots. Okay, let's see if this is any better. Okay, better. As you get older, your head has to be closer. Now, I'm gonna bring back that red ink pad too because now I want to use these two little stamps. This is the gift box. Intuitively, you're going to want to stamp the package first. Don't do that. Start with the ribbon first because when we wrap a present, we always wrap it and then put the bow on. Not so much with the stamp set. I found that this works better for me. And again, get your scratch paper out and you're gonna experiment. I'm gonna put my bow right here and I made it black because I'm just working with that same color palette, okay? I'm gonna close this because you know an open ink pad is a recipe for disaster. And then I'm gonna come into this little present and I'm gonna ink this up. You're looking at the bottom and you're looking to align it inside of that bow. Look at that, isn't that slick? Love that. I found by stamping the bow first, I got it even. If I did it the other way around, I messed up. That's just me. So you're going to experiment. I'm going to come back over to a piece of layer here, which is real red. There's my yucky side. Guess my mom's not getting this one tonight. Let's add a little adhesive to that. And we're going to layer that on top of here. Now this is going to go on the inside of the card, but we're not quite finished yet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll add my adhesive here to the outside edges. And then this is going to go here. The cool thing about this card, you're gonna see in just a moment when we put the other panel on, is that it's going to look like, wow, all the different layers. In essence, this is one piece. This is basically the entire card and the mechanism. But let's layer this up a little bit more to bring cohesiveness to this card. This provides the stability for the fun fold. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these two pieces together I'm gonna add some adhesive in my four corners, and then this is gonna get layered on top of the real red. Again, a very narrow margin all the way around, and we're going to hear that. This now is gonna go on top of here. Now you might be thinking, well, why? Because like I said, it provides the stability for the card. I want you to fold the card so that it's collapsed. When you flip this over, I want you to be very careful where you're going to put the adhesive. It's only gonna go on this one panel here. Nothing here, otherwise it will not open. All right, so I'm gonna leave this upside down so you can see, and I'm going to work with my adhesive. I'm gonna place some here, some here, and I'm gonna work all around my edges. I don't want this to lift. Remember with fun folds, you wanna be a little bit more generous with your adhesives if the pieces move. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just add a little bit more adhesive to those areas. Do you see how it's only here and not here? All right, next step you're going to collapse the card again. And I know it's sticky, but I want you to hold it by the ends and I want you to hover over this layer. What you're looking to do is create a border from this black Z fold that we have the slit in 
to the stability base of this card. And once you're happy with it, go ahead and tack it down. I'm going to open up the card. I'm going to flip it upside down and I am going to rub from the back because sure enough, I always have ink on my hands and it always goes all over the cards. So now look what happens. But you know what? I decided it needed a little bit of pop. So I'm going to bring in my rhinestones. Absolutely love these. They have glue dots already on the back. There are various sizes, which gives you lots and lots of options. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up one of those. I'm going to place that right here in the middle of the bow. I'm going to grab another one. And let's put this one now down here on top of that present. Oh, you got to love some sparkle on a Christmas card. And let's do one more. And I think this one, um, let's do this one's a little bit bigger. I like that. I'm going to put that up here next to the greeting. Now, positioning, like I said, is really, really important because when you close this, you can still see the greeting of the card. Now, wait until you see these variations. But look at this. you got to love this because this is all one piece. Typical Z folds actually have a piece that's taped here, but this just provides the slit. And look, it, it does stand up all by itself. Isn't that cute? All right, let me show you these other cards. These next two I created, and this one is using the North Pole Mischief. I know, you're probably thinking, do we have that stamp set in your online store? Yes, we sure do, and it gets no airtime. But I want you to take a quick look at this. Happy gift wrapping season, but this slit Z fold has a surprise. Are you ready? So the whole image expands. Isn't that adorable? Keep in mind that whatever you put back here for your stability base layer will show. So if you're gonna use designer series paper, make sure it's complimentary. And once again, of course, it's going to stand. I chose again to, left, to leave this panel blank. You can add another piece of cardstock here to provide more space for writing, or of course you can provide it to the back side if you'd like. But isn't that adorable? And I did use the Stampin' Blends alcohol-based markers for this one. So that's two. This one uses the Cup of Tea Bundle. Now it has coordinating designer series paper that's called um, Tea Boutique. That's the name, <laughs> Tea Boutique. It's hard to remember all these products because they're so amazing. But check out that little brushed gold heart. Isn't that adorable? It just adds that little bit of shimmer. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open this one up and this one's different. I added designer series paper that coordinates with that package just to bring a little bit more cohesiveness and a little bit more color to this. Again, kept that greeting off to the side where here the greeting is the focal point on the side of the Z fold and my image is here. All right, but there's more, okay? Now I have three more that Gina made and normally she would have shared those because she would be here, but she left me her cards when I sent her home this morning. And here is her first one. This uses Santa's delivery. But guess what? There is not one stamp here. This is that amazing designer series paper and the dies that coordinate with the stamp set, and there are stamps, will cut out some of the images on the designer series paper. So if you're looking for an impressive and easy card, this is it. But watch, look what Gina did. So Gina put her greeting off-centered here, mounted it up on an embossed background, use that really fun gift wrapping designer series paper. This is the only thing, again, that is stamped. So she used those beautiful papers to her advantage. All right, so I'll make another pile here. That's now four. Here comes another one. Here is a beautiful handmade Christmas card. Look at this. This is Regal Reindeer. I hope Gina's gonna correct me if that's not right, because remember I didn't make these, she did. But I think it's called Regal Reindeer. I love what she's done here. Iridescent rhinestones here to bring out some shimmer. She used layers of gold foil, but watch this one. She left this panel blank on purpose because you can have too much of a good thing sometimes, right? But do you see the designer series paper here? Remember, we just talked about that. So she made continuity between these panels, especially for the display, which I loved. So this draws your eye because of the red and the color. It just really, really pops. Classy, classy card. And of course, look at that. There is your space to add all the greetings and the writing and the sentiments that you want. Or how about a family photo? That would be fantastic. I should turn this one over. That one's blank. Okay, here comes the next one. This is her sixth, this is our sixth card. This is her third, but I've got a bonus for you. You don't want to miss this one. Okay, so here's Gina's other card. And this uses her favorite stamp set, I think. It's called Apple Harvest. 
Now, one thing I want to point out here are the dies. These harvest dies that go with the Apple Harvest stamp set are limited edition. They are only available until September 30th, which is eek this week. All right. If you already have this stamp set, you need to grab the dies now before they're gone forever. If you love it and you want the bundle, now is a great time to get it. Bundles save you 10%. You get both the stamps and the dies. The twine on this just gives us added texture. Look at that. Isn't that fun? And then once again, you can add cardstock here if you want. Add a panel to the back like she did here. But a little bit of bling using those rustic metallic gems, which I love. All right. But I'm going to separate these because before I go live with you, I always practice because I want to be able to articulate the instructions. All right, so let me show you the stamp set first. And actually, it's a bundle. It's called Elephant Parade. Now, I love whimsical stamps as well as Gina does. And obviously, this will make a Merida card. So it's great to, just for a cheerful pick-me-up card, a friend card. Of course, you got baby, balloons, all kinds of cute little things. And look at the dies. Love it. All right, so let me show you what I did. I made this. So I did sweet little one. I decided to make a baby card. Gina has a friend who's going to have a baby in March. And I made this one for her. And so the die did the butterfly. Look at, you don't have to do any fussy work here. You just color in that cute little elephant. So wait till what I did. Are you ready? There's more to this. Just hang on. I took a greeting that was typically long. Do you see it? And I pieced it off together. Now let me tell you how I did that. Um, I'll do a quick demo for you on that in just a second. I didn't plan it, but I do want to show you. I have a video on showing you how to do it. I do some masking with household tape and it works like a charm. But look, we're going to open this one up. So I carried the designer series paper into here. But do you know what I found out? Are you ready? Gift card. This is going to be a great gift for her. This fits perfectly right here. So I can put a glue dot right here to hold this down and watch. You can't even see it until you open the card. Is that not incredible? I was like, oh my gosh, that's like the perfect size. Now, of course, I didn't put a glue dot on it yet, so it's kind of shifting. But I thought that was just another brilliant way to use this. Now, as I promised, let me talk to you very, very quickly about that greeting. So let me go ahead and pull that out. I'm going to grab a stamp to mount it, and I'm going to show you how to do this. I like to just pack lots of tips in for you. Here's a scrap piece of paper. And I used basic gray. You'll notice too, whenever you have a soft palette on a card, you might find that the black is too harsh. So I absolutely love to use basic gray. It tones it down a little bit. It creates a little bit softer feel for the card, but again, still dark enough that you can read it. All right. So you can see here one greeting, right? A miracle worth waiting for. That's not what I wanted. So let me get my household tape. I'm going to pull off a piece here. I am going to make a tab on one end because that's just going to keep my fingers clean. I'm going to mask off everything I don't want. So a miracle, I'm, I want that. I don't want worth waiting for. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to cover up worth waiting for. You got to be careful. Make sure that your tape sticks to your block. That's going to make it a whole lot easier to take off. You're going to ink this up. You got to remove the tape. Gosh, have I made that mistake. You're going to stamp it. Look at, we got just some of the words. Isn't that amazing? All right, so I'm cleaning that stamp off camera. Very, very, very important. You need to make sure that it's dry and you have no residual ink, okay? You would do that on scratch paper because if there's a shadow of ink left on here, when you go to do this other part, you're gonna have a problem. You're gonna be able to see it. Another piece of household take. This time, we're just gonna do the opposite. So we want this side. So we're gonna mask off a miracle, okay? Stick into your block to make it easy for you. Ink it up. Take off the tape. The first time you don't take off the tape, you will remember. <laughs> and then this I'm going to put right here. Look at that. Is that not slick? You know what I love is sometimes we have the absolute perfect reading, but it's too long. But Or maybe you just want part of it. Maybe you just want a miracle. Or maybe you want just worth waiting for on the inside and the miracle on the outside of your card. This gives you so much flexibility. I think you're going to absolutely love that tip. Again, that will sneak in your little gift card. We've got Gina's amazing slit Z folds. And of course, the ones that I demonstrated for you here. Do me a favor. Leave me a comment and tell me which one is your favorite.
I was so excited that I could get a gift card in there. I'm like set now because I don't have to make a pocket. I don't have to come up with a different way to display my gift card. It's going to be all inside that little fold snuck inside of there. All right. A couple things before we go. Do me a favor. If you have enjoyed tonight's video, hit that thumbs up, which is a like here on YouTube. It helps me immensely. If you are not subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to do so. Click subscribe and then click the bell icon and the word all, because guess what? That's going to send you notifications when I'm live, which is every week. We're going to talk about the next date before you go. Stick around for the live Q&A if you'd like. Head over to lisasstampstudio.com. If you click on shop, you'll see that I have a very vast PDF tutorial library there for you. You'll be able to look through that library and choose some great tutorials for immediate download and purchase. And while you're there, scroll all the way to the bottom. And again, you'll see the word subscribe, but that is different. That is for my free weekly e-newsletter that's sent every Thursday. I provide a project tutorial in that newsletter that is not shared on any of my other platforms. It is exclusive for you. It is no frills. We would love to include you. Now, do me a favor. Make sure that you write this date down. I'm going to bring it up on the screen for you. I am coming back live with you next Monday, which is October 3rd. It will be at 8 p.m. Eastern Time right here on my YouTube channel. I hope that you will come back. I have something fun in store for you. If you need to leave, I've loved that you've been here. If you can stick around for the Q&A, I would love to answer those questions. All right, let me go ahead and just change screens really quick. I'm going to move those out of the way because I'm going to reach for my mouse. And I'm just going to wait a couple seconds because I know there is a delay between when I speak and when you hear it and when you type and then I see it. So, so excited about all the sweet comments. Thank you, friends. I really, really appreciate that. I'm trying to wake up my little mouse here so I can get your questions going. Oh, mom's sticking around. Thanks, mom. Uh, okay, you're welcome for the, uh, the project sheet, Virginia. You are very welcome. Okay, Jeannie has asked a good question. Will a mouse pad, the squishy kind, work as well as a pierce mat? You know what? I tried it. The answer is yes, if it's a brand new mouse pad, but you know what I found out? This has a lot more density to it. So a mouse pad starts to get kind of mushy over time and the backing on your mouse pad has some kind of ribbing in it. And sometimes, sometimes if I've had a big, large solid stamp, I found that some of that impression leans forward. Try it. I love the pierce mat. One time buy and you're set and you can use it with your, take your pick tool with that paper piercing tool attachment and you can make holes for brads and all kinds of fun things. All right, uh, I'm looking for some more questions. Oh, Mary, thank you for the kind words. I'm glad that you find the project sheets easy to follow. Um, all right, I'm scrolling for some more questions. Oh, I'm scrolling, scrolling. I'm trying to keep up with you, bear with me. Susan said, I have to tell you, Lisa, I love your suggestion for the tiny glue bottle. You're welcome. It's a lifesaver. Okay, let me reach for it. Many of you may not know this, but I sell my liquid glue, of course, in my online store. Okay, the multi-purpose liquid glue. But the tip on this is really not narrow enough for those little tiny pieces. So I found these. So this is a precision glue applicator. It has a precision tip on the top. It has a silicone lid. I have it linked for you on my website. Go to lisasstampstudio.com, click on shop, and then about ooh, maybe a quarter of a way down, you'll see craft room favorites and scroll. You'll see the bottles linked there for you. They come in a 10 pack, but you want them, okay? Christmas is coming. Give them as stocking stuffers to all your crafty friends. This has almost made me like liquid glue because I can control how much it comes out where this was more challenging for me. I'm just heavy handed with it and I love this. The rubber band holds that little lid in place when you're using it and that silicone lid is fantastic for allowing it not to dry out. This is the same glue from this bottle that I put in here almost two years ago. Game changer. Okay, I could take a couple more questions. I'm just scrolling around to try to find some. You guys like the glue bottle, I see that. Uh, Oh, I'm so glad. I see so many comments about the glue bottle. Okay, so Terry has a question. Her question is, on the Take Your Pick tool, the clay comes out and it seems to always loose. Any tips? Yes. Okay. I'm going to tell you what. If your friends don't mind, I'm going to turn you back down this way so I can actually show you. Let me move this stuff out of the way a little bit. Now, there's caps that come with your tool, of course. 
So I'm assuming what you're trying to say, Terry, is that when you twist this, okay, and it starts to have, the, let me just pull this off and show you. You twist it and then the putty starts to extend. That's normal, okay? But what you're saying is it doesn't stop. Well, guess what? Just back twist it a little bit and that's gonna take care of it. So if you have ever, um, I'm trying to relate it to something. If you've ever squeezed putty or toothpaste and it just wants to keep going and going and going, you just let go and it kind of backs itself up. So that's all I did is I twisted it. When I got enough off, I just back twisted it so it would stop. I like to mush mine down because I find it's a little bit easier for me to use to pick things up. I love this tool. This is the best thing since sliced bread. I hope that answers your question. Let me change screens again one more time because I can take another question. Uh, okay. I am looking for a question. Okay. Oh, you guys are talking about the glue bottle still. So cute. I love it. All right. Uh, I'm just looking for one more question. Okay. Deshira is asking, would the Stamparellas, Stamparatus help those of us with carpal tunnel? Okay, so Deshira is talking about the stamp positioning tool, which is called the Stamparatus. Now, if you have carpal tunnel, you have pain similarly, I'm assuming, because mine's basal joint, so it's a little bit different. You still have to push, but I want to give you a couple tips. If you use a dry eraser, and I have one linked in my craft room favorites for you, which means you're going to ink up the plate on the Stamparatus positioning tool, you're going to close it, and you use a dry eraser over the plate, then you don't have to push with your hand. It makes it so much easier. There are also tools out there. One of them is called the Chucky tool. It's not a Stampin' Up! product. Um, I have not been able to find one um, that I can actually link that I've actually used myself. The one I have was made by a YouTube viewer as a gift that I love. But you can check it out. It's called C-H-U-C-K-Y, Chucky Tool. And that will really, really help you. All right. I think that's it for tonight's Q&A. I hope that helped you a little bit. I'm looking forward to having you join me on Monday. Gina, thank you for all your hard work and moderating. I know you had to jump through a lot of hoops to get home in those hours to be able to be here. And I look forward to seeing you all on Monday. Have a great evening.